All right. Next example, we have inclined plane. Just like our first, very first example in momentum transport. You have inclined plane and then some water flowing above the plane. All right. But in this case, if we think or if the system has difference in temperature, suppose the temperature of the plane itself is T delta, but temperature of the air outside is T zero. In this case, if you think or the, the problem states clearly that viscosity does change with respect to temperature, at T delta, viscosity becomes mu delta. At T zero, viscosity becomes mu zero. Okay? Now, viscosity does change. So in this problem, again, we have momentum transport because we have flow. We have energy transport because we have difference in temperature. Which one should we do first? Okay, so now we have temperature, I mean energy and momentum transport simultaneously. The, in theory, you need to solve two equations simultaneously, but we cannot. We need to solve um, each um, equation individually. So we choose select whether we, we start finding velocity profile first or finding temperature profile first. What should we do? Let's analyze the problem. Regarding energy transport, we have conduction, right? Conduction in which direction? In x direction. Do we have conduction in z? If the plate here is hot, if the water coming down is cold, as the water flow downward, temperature of water increase, right? So that means temperature here and temperature there are not the same. There will be conduction in Z. Okay, but whether or not we can drop it later is another problem. Let's analyze everything according to the problem first. So we do have conduction in X. We do have conduction in Z. Do we have convection? Yes. In which direction? In Z. Is there any convection in X? Can it be convection in X? In other words, can fluid flow in x direction? In general, yes, you can say that the fluid does not flow in x direction. Okay? But under special circumstances, you can. You can have flow in x direction. For example, if you think higher temperature or higher temperature of the fluid has lower density. Fluid around here should have lower density than fluid around there. So there will be rising of the fluid according to natural convection. 
in that case, velocity in x direction is not zero. Okay, and there will be convection in x direction as well. That's complicated. Okay, now, but under a problem here, the problem just states clearly that viscosity does change with respect to temperature, but it does not say that density change with temperature. So if you think you can assume that density does not change much with temperature, then the problem here can still be solvable in terms of momentum transport. Right? But on the other hand, unless you know velocity profile, you can never solve it for temperature profile, right? Because temperature profile or energy transport would heavily rely on convection in z direction. You cannot solve for convection in z direction unless you know velocity profile. So which one is more realistic? Assume that density is constant, neglect the temperature profile at the moment, solve for velocity profile first. Or on the other hand, taking account at density may change with respect to temperature, trying to find temperature profile first. Which one is more doable? The first one, okay? So in our case here, we will assume density is approximately constant. That's the first thing. All right, oh, problem already state mu is equal to some function of temperature. So if we assume density is constant, then we can start with equation of continuity. Now in our problem here, we have Vx, Vy, and Vz. Which one is zero? X is zero if you neglect a natural convection. Y is zero for sure, as long as the plane is large enough for you to neglect an effect. Vc is function of x only, okay? So steady state, this one becomes zero. Vx is zero, Vy is zero. Again, you end up with Vz by dz equal to zero under assumption that density is constant can be brought out. Then we decide to start with equation of motion. <coughs> what should we do with equation of motion? Can we start using Navier-Stokes equation? In this case, no you cannot. You cannot use Navier-Stokes anymore. Why? Because viscosity does change with temperature. And temperature change with respect to position. 
So therefore, you have viscosity changing with respect to position. Navier-Stokes equation does not apply. Okay. So if we cannot use Navier-Stokes equation, what should we use? Give up. Remember, before Navier-Stokes equation, we start having equation of motion. And then, under assumption of constant density, constant viscosity, it becomes Navier-Stokes. So this one, if you cannot use Navier-Stokes, go back one step to equation of motion. An equation of motion here should be equation in form of tau, not in form of velocity. All right? So go back from Navier-Stokes for equation of motion. If you do that for x component, you will end up with this form. For y component, you end up with this form. And c component, so in order to use equation in general form of equation of motion, you need to decide not on velocity, not whether velocity change with respect to x, y, or z, but you need to decide on tau, whether tau x, y, tau x, x, tau y, z, or any other tau are equal to zero or not. Okay? By doing that, you end up with this only tau x, z are not it's not equal to zero. Okay? You can also say that right now we have velocity component in z direction only. That means tau with the second subscript of z is not zero. Right? You have tau xx, tau yx, tau zx. All these three are related to x momentum because we have second subscript to bx. They are all related to x momentum. As long as you do not have velocity component in x direction, all of that becomes zero. Again, tau xy, tau yy, and tau zy. All of them directly related to y momentum. If you do not have y velocity in y direction, they are all zero. Okay? So what you have left would be tau xz, tau yz, and tau zz. By looking at velocity component, all of these three has a chance not to be zero. But this one, for example, is a momentum flux in z direction, is z momentum that's change or transfer in y direction. That means you need to have velocity change in y direction. But in our case, Vz does not change with respect to y. So this term will be dropped. This term, on the other hand, look into z, velocity in z component, and there's supposed to be a change in velocity in z component. In our case, we neglect all the acceleration. Vz does not change with respect to z. This term is dropped. For last term here, we do have Vc changing with respect to x. So this term is not zero. The only term here. So leaving only this term. Okay?